up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the A and A Show. I'm the Leo Avia, and of course, I'm the Pisces. No, I'm an Aquarius. You know, the <laughs> the Aquarius, the water bearer himself, A A R. That's what's up. That's what's up. And this episode is actually going to be a four. It's going to be along with a four-part episode, and we're talking about Disney music, specifically animation. Disney. The Disney animation. Oh, yes. Well, yes. <laughs> let me let me scoot up my sheet a little. <laughs> let me scoot up my sheet a little, as I am incredibly <laughs> dark, but it's okay. Lighting is not a factor when you're an Aquarius. <laughs> oh, you know what? This works for like Disney villain stuff i guess yep. so oh oh okay oh oh you know what you know what here here's an here's an idea let's since we're talking about the music within the classic disney realm mm -hmm. um i got the villains i got oh. the villains i got the villain song okay which is funny because okay. if you think about it in okay. the uh in the classics since that's what we're going over today they really didn't mm -hmm. have too much i don't even think We'll, we'll go down. The, now that we're, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll go down. And we're yeah. going to do a four part. This is part four. You know, first is going to be, you know, the classic and then the golden age. Mm -hmm. and then the second is going to be, uh, you know, the animal phase where their main characters were animals. And then we're going to do the renaissance. And then we're going to do the modern, the modern age. So let's get into it. The first one on the list is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs made in 1937, the first Disney animated movie ever, <laughs> feature film. And Won an Oscar. Did it did it did? And the music to this day still resonates because you know, even though I'm wishing isn't really one of the their ones that's known it's still you know a pretty good song yeah, and of no, course when it, yeah when it dips into one song like with that guy when the prince comes oh my god the music mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm wishing i'm wishing right. and like how they made it echo in the well like okay right the fact that they did that in what 37 you know to mm -hmm. think about that the the art just just picking on that song for a second right so when you have that song and it's like the perfect Disney intro, basically, because you see the princess and all this stuff and you have the, the whale sound. And then when the prince comes in and he just changes the whole song and starts singing one song, you know, like that. And mm -hmm. here comes me with the villain stuff and having the queen just look, look out that window. And she's, like, she's like, OK, <laughs> the fact that she was jealous of like a little 14 year old girl, though. Hmm? Right. Like, well, well, I mean, no, that's 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 pretty Hollywood that's brand. How that's how it be. That's it. It'd be like that. <laughs> and then, of course, whistle while you work. <laughs> whistle while you, while you work. <laughs> whistle while you twerk. <laughs> the Yin Yang Twins were in their <laughs> bag when they <laughs> modeled it. <on. laughs> right. That shows you, like, what a how you know how influential that song was mm -hmm. like in 37 and then like early 2000s hip-hop modeled a course after it like right come on come on and then of course hi ho hi ho i'm surprised nobody has <laughs> done a done a 2000s trap remix of hi ho yet because i mean like it's in the title, you know, like, come on, like, City Girls, where's where's my hi ho remix? Meg, Meg, <laughs> come on, Meg, where's where's my like a hi ho? Like, come on, it is there. It's literally there. Yeah. But like, no, you think about it, you just think about it, like back in yeah, back in 37, the whole production I think started, you know, obviously years before that, but mm -hmm. just with Walt, his brother Roy, and with the nine old men and a, you know a few others and a dream, you know the fact that they could do all of this and come up with all of this music, and you know like that, 
and it's it honestly is timeless you know regardless like if you listen to those songs still it's not obviously the 30s except for you know snow white's voice actress but it's like it's pretty timeless music because you can go to disneyland and hear that stuff and be like oh I, yeah this is a good song yep a certain part in disneyland and they'll play and like yep yeah, yep. you know, and if they play whistle while you work next time, got to whistle while you twerk. Right. That's what you got to do when we go to Disneyland. Right. Yes. If, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also, and I'm also curious about because Snow White is going to be, uh, you know, another live action that they're adapting. Mm -hmm. I wonder, you know, since they normally do an original song, you know, they yeah. add original song in now. I wonder. Yeah. What the original song is going to be for this one, because Rachel Ziegler be can queen. sing. It better be for right. the queen. Right, she needs a villain song. Give the queen, give the like, evil queen a villain song. She deserves like it. She, she deserves it. One. Can't give Maleficent one, but you can. Mm. Right, <laughs> right. My girl Maleficent needs one. Like, come on. Come she on. been needing one. Mistress of Evil, but the original mm -hmm. Mistress of Evil. I mean, just to just to geek out for a second, you know. <sighs> I think, oh my gosh, yeah, when I was very, 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 very young, when I was just a little water bearer, when I was at just a little bucket, <laughs> bucket, you know, like, that damn scene, like, just to talk about the music for a second, like the score mm -hmm. in the scene where the queen turns into the witch, witch. Mm -hmm. never forget that, because that damn near traumatized me when I was younger because it's like the strings and you know everything like all of the music you know the crescendo there's there's the joke that Avia is gonna make from a certain movie with Jim Carrey but you know the crescendo <laughs> of it all crescendo, ending on the right foot and strike a posse <laughs> thank you so all of that was literally everything she just said was in that when like just the way everything built up and, you know, it's like the, the gas had a sound, you know, it had these strings, you know, when her hair started flowing in the wind and the lightning and the thunder, it was, you know, the music got more and more intense and it's just like, what? Mm -hmm. The thing, they did that. They did. Look how they ate that. Look, how Look at they how they ate that. Like, you know, the unions may have been bad. Them unions may have been bad, and I know they were. Maybe some racism, and I know it was. Oh, for sure. Oh, but for sure. Damn, they did. <laughs> Look how they ate that, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Snow White is a classic. I mean, that's why it's a classic, Eric, because it's mm -hmm. the first one, and it set the standard for right. what future Disney animated movies would be, especially right. with Disney princesses. And, you know, as we go on, we'll talk about how that mold has changed, but mm -hmm. you know, it's, you still got to give it to the OG. Yeah, got to. And if you don't, you know, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Right. <laughs> you, you need to be on this side with the villains with me. Right. Chilling like a villain. That's, that's a new theme song. But wouldn't you be the villains, though, because you have a black background? I would. I would. Now, the question is, which villain would I be? That's the question. That's the question. Who, who am I more like? Well, zero. I zero, because she's, she's a Leo. A lion. That's true. That's true. And she has, in my opinion, she has the best villain song. I I'm agree. Sorry, be prepared get, was, was, was great. When we get to, yeah, when we get to that, we got to geek out about that because uh yeah. that my lullaby that's my lullaby yeah. it's ugh, top the, way she, where, the way she walked up that cliff oh my god yeah no i'm yeah when we get there when we get there it's going oh no wait no i gotta be the villain because the, the yep, it's gone. so we're both villains how about we'll, we'll both be be villains i'm with it i'm with it you're a mother golfful type and I'm like <laughs> overtly no. 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 <laughs> oh. No. We're gonna get to that too. <laughs> no, but so, like Snow White did his thing though. It did. And the it second did. one on the list is oh, my, my boy. Yep. My boy who wants to be a real boy. Let's yep. give it up for Pinocchio. Oh. Man. Pinocchio. <laughs> that boy just needed a he needed a hug. He did. He needed some. He needed to learn him something, you know. 
I mean, what Jiminy Cricket, all Jiminy did was just run around and get on his case, but like he didn't teach him nothing until it was like high tide, you know, in the damn whale's mouth. Like, right. oh wait, no, there was a villain song because of the, oh, yeah. the the fox and what the cat. Yeah, they I Billy D, the an actor's life for me. Mm-hmm. Once again, there's a shady joke there about Hollywood. Yes. Because they you know, all they did was <laughs> they all they did, up. you know, all they did was just sell them to that man. That's it. And they all had that, to the had that whip, you know. The jackasses. I wonder what the message was there. Hmm. 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 When you learn about Bobby Driscoll, you'll find out. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> shots, shots, fired. <laughs> shots fired no we haven't gotten to bobby just yet he's he's down there he's well, down one, there well one thing that pinocchio did as far as music it gave disney their theme song that they use this yep. day yep. when you wish upon a star everyone if you don't know the words, everyone can hear the instrumental in their head. Exactly. Disney. That's what you think of. That with the castle, yep. where they're the old school, like just like the blue background. It's all blue. Yep. 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 <laughs> or as they evolve with like the bluish, purplish, pinkish sunset behind the new animated castle. Like yep. you either way, you, you know, like y'all know this song. That is probably mm-hmm. the most iconic song from Disney. And think about just the fact that that was their second movie. Mm-hmm. You know? And mm-hmm. once again, like they upped, they upped everything, like the animation, the music, you know, the voice acting, everything, because they got a bigger budget. And you just you felt it. You felt every scene, like when Pinocchio was lying, you mm-hmm. had, you know, you had the music, which was I can't like the only way I can describe it is the music was it was a musical version of saying bullshit. Yep. Yep. You know, when they got swallowed up by that whale, you felt mm-hmm. it, you know, the way the like just <sighs> look right. how they really ate that. The, no, I just no, for real though, because just a quick animation nerd moment, the way those artists literally drew that water frame by frame, you know, the ink, paint, all that stuff, frame by frame, and it looks so real for animation. Urgh, they did good, yeah. but yeah. They did animation, mean, don't get half as much respect as they should. No, they get as much respect as writers. Mm. 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 You know, you know, you know. Nope. But you know, whoever speaking of writers, whoever wrote the lyrics to "I've Got No Strings on Me" deserves right their flowers. Because I mean, when they used it in what uh, that Avengers trail, I was like, oh, okay, this might actually be you know, oh, how we've mm-hmm. we know differently, but you know, those yeah, the I can just keep geeking out about that music. They just mm-hmm. they did they damn thing. Mm-hmm. They really did. They like just you felt like even um and this shows my Disney nerd moment, you know, even little wooden boy right after when you wish a part of star, you know, you felt Geppetto's you know, longing for a son. Mm-hmm. You know, and that he's such a recluse and all this stuff that he had to cr- basically create his own. Just oh my god, this is a sad story if you really think about it. It is. And it's another remake coming soon because Tom Hanks is reportedly playing Geppetto. So another yep. live uh, adaptation. So I wonder if they're going to have an original song in here too. Um, and I wonder if they're going to put Wish, uh, Wish Upon a Star in here. I'm they kidding. better. They better. Shoot. They better not have John Legend be Jiminy Cricket though. Uh. You know they would. Mm-hmm. Y'all out there, don't act like I'm not lying. Y'all know they would. <laughs> I get William uh, William Manuel Miranda. You already know it. Mm-hmm. I don't make the rules. That's just how Disney work, y'all. That's that's true. <laughs> that's true. And so the third <sighs> is beautiful. Different. It's beautiful, beautiful. It's different, and it combines a case study of music and motion. And I love that it intersects between. 
you know, actually watching the musicians play and then going yeah. into, you know, the animation. Of course, we're talking about Fantasia. Yes. Of course. And just, you know, hearing the classic, the classical music with beautiful animation, like, it was different. It's the longest animated Disney movie, right. but I think it's the most profound. Nobody would have thought of that. Nobody would have thought about putting animation with classical music the way that they did, and it worked. Right, and it, it sucks how it didn't do that great at the box office because that was for for someone out there other than you, Avia. They'll get this. That's how you do experimental filmmaking right there you know that's that's what you call cinematic essay you know because mm -hmm. Walt was trying to you know if you look at the history of it Walt was trying to do something for adults with his you know work before you know because there's just three movies in now we're three movies mm -hmm. deep and mm -hmm. he's like I want it for everybody but you know let's cater to some adults too because Pinocchio was absolutely for little kids let's let's you know and that first so okay so music nerd disney nerd full mode now that first song takata and fugue in d minor by johann sebastian bach like y'all it's usually done in organ y'all know the it's it's in every horror movie you know da -da -da, da -da 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 -da, like everyone knows that mm -hmm. but they did it in strings that's number one. Like, you don't do it in the organ, you do it on strings. Bold move. Second, they they animate. It's, I, it's very hard to describe. You're just going to have to, you know, work with me here. But it's like they animate nothing, not nothing, but they just animate to the music. So it's like when the strings go up, you just see a bunch of lights go up when you, you know, uh, as the music, you know, goes higher and higher and higher, you're going up in clouds that really aren't clouds. You know, it's just beams of light. It's just literally just animation. There's no figures. There's no animal. It's just like images. Mm -hmm. And that's like the most artsy of artsy that you can get. But I mean, like, you know, you got the Nutcracker Sweet. We, we all know this, those kind of things. The Rite of Spring, which was incredibly racist in its original, you know, viewing because they had that little black centaur with the you know, with the uh, with the jigaboo hair, you know, mm -hmm. and the big lips and all that stuff. Oh, well, but everyone, okay. <laughs> okay, we gotta talk about the censored eleven one day. But yep. everyone knows the Sorcerer's Apprentice. You know that yes, was that Mickey, Mickey red, red with the blue hat. Mm -hmm. You know, controlling those brooms, like great stuff. But I mean. For my own reasons, I have to say, Night on Bald Mountain, that was, <laughs> that was, you know, one, traumatizing for a little bitty child, because, I mean, it's literally basically Satan coming out of a mountain and waking up the dead and the depths of hell to just dance around, and it's like, you know, you got poltergeist, you have um, women, bird things and you know it's like their breasts are all out and you have little demons with they with they stuff out and things are dancing and it's like you know the villains the the satanic figure they changed his name to Chernabog but you know it was basically Satan and that was just like they did that came out of Disney mm -hmm. you know and the music it was just like God it just it takes your breath away. But then at the, you know, as soon as he looks like he's about to, and you know, more nerd, when he looks like he's about to attack the viewers, and then all of a sudden a bell, you know, a morning bell to signify morning, and the sun's coming out, and he just closes himself up, and he's the top of the mountain again. And then it goes into Ave Maria, and it's these people on a pilgrimage, and you just see the, the lights from lanterns, just beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. God, that's what music and motion supposed to be, y'all. Exactly. Filmmakers, what y'all doing? <laughs> like, <sighs> oh, y'all, shame. And then, you know, I I would, I have to mention, um, there was a 
there was a short that got cut from Fantasia, and it was by Salvador Dali, actually. I think it was called Destino. Destino. Um, is once it, you know, it, it was very artsy music in motion. Like, if you can think of, if you know Salvador Dali stuff, if you don't, he's out there, up. he's out there. <laughs> yeah, look him up. But like that stuff, just it's it's beautiful. Yeah, Destino, like it's beautiful. It's, it's about a woman and she's like chasing a figure, you know, she doesn't really know what the figure is, she just is going and it's just it's beautiful stuff. And I think they did that for the uh, for the anniversary of Fantasia a few years ago, like ten years ago. But you know, Fantasia just—I hate that we're never going to get another movie like that. Right. You know, we'll get into Fantasia two thousand, and I can tell you why I disagree. That's why that's not like the first Fantasia. But you know, I just—I hate we're never going to get another movie that's just pure music and motion that doesn't care what the target audience is, you know, cough, cough, Warner Brothers, and, <laughs> you know, like, Sing's not going to give us this. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say it. Sing ain't going to give us stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Modern Disney won't give us stuff like this. You can think, no, you know what? We'll get into the Michael Eisner era. I'll, I'll, I'll start breaking all that down, too. But, like, the corporate stuff is interesting, you know, mm -hmm. but, like, it just... Yeah, Fantasia was. It was ahead of its time. Fantasia was, ahead it was of its way time. too. It was. I think it was way too ahead of its time because nobody was ready for that, mm. you know. And if you look at what came after, in the Walt eras, you you can definitely see, you know, he shied away from that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, <sighs> okay, mini nerd rant about Disney over. <laughs> So the next one on the list is the Reluctant Dragon. Nineteen forty-one. It's a movie. It yeah, it's a movie. movie. I'll just I'll say it like this. I'll say just I'll say this, and that's my piece. You can speak on it if you want. I think that was the beginning of the end for a while because mm -hmm. I think what the next two movies, you know, were in the Disney classic, when people think Disney classics, but after this, you know, the uh, this this particular movie, The Reluctant Dragon, you know, that kind of started all of those easy to make movies where they just take different shorts and you got your fun and fancy freeze and mm -hmm. make my music and stuff like that. So, you know, this was the beginning of the end for a while because this was also the beginning of the rumblings of a strike coming. There was a strike coming oh, in Walt. I'm not surprised. I am not surprised about yeah. the strike at all. Yeah, it's they like, were, these animators were getting tired. They, I heard they I mean, were working hard. I heard they like, were working hard. Imagine writers, artists, uh, animators, con you know, all the concept artists, um, the ones who wrote the music, you know, the uh, people did the orchestra. These folks were getting paid literal pennies they got tired and mm -hmm. so right after this movie they went on strike walt and roy were like we could give into their demands or we can just make another movie and that's where we got avia we got dumbo and that says a yes. lot because now think about think about that one scene when the clowns were going on strike mm -hmm. there you go there you go y'all and it also shows because I don't see about everything. You know, right, the racist depictions of crows. We all know who the crows were supposed to be depicted as. The, the main one was named Jim. <clears throat> that's not the only depiction. <laughs> that's not the only depiction. Let's get started. We are just getting started. Right. <laughs> yeah, we really just get that. No, and it sucks because it's the fact that one, when I was younger, I liked the song. You know, it was like fun and fancy free, but something always felt off about it when I was younger. It really did. And I'm like, that sucks as you, you know, really get to understand how racism is because Baby Mine, beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful song. You know, um, Casey. Casey Jr., you know, the, the train song, mm -hmm. like, 
uh, Pink Elephants on Parade. Yep. Man, P that scene, that scene before that we- That was a great animated scene right yeah, there. before like, we get back on them crow's ass, like <laughs> the, the Pink Elephant scene, one, the fact that Dumbo and, and uh, whatever that rat's name got drunk, you know, that, mm -hmm. that's 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 something that, that needs to be talked about, even though it's a cartoon elephant, it's still a, a child, that's one thing, mm -hmm. but that scene, that was animated, perfect you know creepy it was creepy mm -hmm. like the voices you know the way that everything just con like those elephants contorted into different things it's like first it's a it's a it's a giant figure walking but it's done but elephant heads but then it turns into a snake and then it turns into a pyramid and then it turns into a belly dance and then it turns into an eyeball there's some figure scares i'm like what, what, what? <laughs> and the music works with it it does it does. It works so well because like, boom, 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 boom. yeah, it just, go, it just goes into it, and you're like, "What am I watching? Why am I watching yeah, pink elephants on parade? <laughs> watching pink elephants on parade? <laughs> like, what? It's better than how you be done seeing an elephant fly. Oh my god! Like when I rewatched it the other day, yeah. I mean, I knew, I knew, you know, that the depiction of the crows are racist, and of course, they're meant to be black, right? Black. Of course, and I'm just watching it, just shaking my head, like right. And it's the voices that make it the worst. That's the worst, the worst aspect. Oh. Because if it was just you know a bunch of white people voicing the crows, not with the the southern accents and you know the the drawl and you know basically talking about black people, like they could have got away with if it was just a bunch of you know bunch of dudes, you know, just chilling. Mm -hmm. But you and know they, they got the, the accents and yeah, you know. Even though now I will say some of those lyrics were clever because mm -hmm. you know I heard a fireside chat. I saw a baseball bat. Yeah. You know, like um, mm -hmm. I saw a front porch swing. Mm -hmm. I heard a diamond ring. Like that's clever, but mm -hmm. you know it's overshadowed with this. Mm -mm. Right. It's a no for me, dog. <laughs> it's a no for me, dog. Like. <laughs> The fact them beaks were the lips too. I just, mm -hmm. ugh, ugh. Moving on. <laughs> get that though in this next movie. Well, Bam. Well, the next one is Bambi. But the thing about Bambi, it really didn't. Ha it had music in it, of course, but it Except wasn't. Uh, showers. That's all I think yeah, they had. That's it. And Sad. it wasn't. It wasn't known for their songs. Like it was no more, known more for the storyline. And that traumatic scene when his mother gets shot, everyone to like that still is traumatic to this yep. day. <laughs> yep, for for our youngins in here who still hadn't watched Bambi, um, the death of Mufasa <laughs> is nothing compared to that, okay? Because, like, at least that was you know, you, you had another lion, this was just a straight up man, you know, with some real world stuff just. And the crazy thing is, when I was little, I always thought she got killed at the beginning of the movie. Right. But rewatching it, she got killed like 40 that's minutes. That's traumatic. Now, once again, <laughs> like Mufasa, that's traumatic. It's like you get to look, and really, you know, shoot, Disney was ahead of his time with that. You know, you build up a character that you love and then you just kill them off. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not and Disney. Then, you know, like, it was the fact that right after that, that's where that song "Little April Showers" and it's like all these little kids saying "Little April Showers." I'm like, but, but, but his mama just died. died. How okay. you go? How you gonna ignore that? Mm -hmm. Huh? Oh, yeah. Bambi was that was a troubled child. Ugh. It's wonder, a great movie. It's a great movie. It's a great one. It is. But it's sad as hell. It, that that part is sad as hell. Yeah, Bambi need a hug. Thumper and then his daddy was distant until the end when he finally helped him out. <laughs> Ain't that just like a deer? <laughs> Ain't like, that just on. like a deer? Like, you're on your own, son. <laughs> like, Ain't that oh, just like a deer? <laughs> Ooh, Bambi was, Bambi was a trip. It was. That and was the next one is Saludos Amigos that came out in 42. And you know, this is one of the, again another one of those animation shorts that 
came out. It was a nice little fun movie. And then, you know, the rest of them are just like that. You know, shorts with animation. And, of course, probably the one that I remember most from these are the Three Caballeros. Because of the main song. We're the Three Caballeros. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Song? And they're still, you know, Donald's friends to this day. Because they were in the new revamp of DuckTales. I'm like, let's go. Okay. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> I like that line. We're like three birds of a feather. <laughs> Classic. Now, right. That was probably the one I liked the most. Of yes. The that was the one I probably now, liked. I will say, um, after Three Caballeros, the other one that stood out to me, obviously, was The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Yes. All that one. Classic. We all know that one. Classic. Classic. Like, Mr. Toad, he had his motor car, but uh, Ichabod... He had to keep that head, you know, yep. on his neck. I would love to see more Disney anime movies like that of a horror type nature. Yes. Anime Once horror again, type. you know, that goes back to Fantasia. It's like, you know, I think that was when they started sneaking in, you know, things for the adults. Mm-hmm. Because they knew, because it's like, if you, you when you had Bing Crosby do the entirety of um, the Headless Horseman storyline, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, I usually, other than uh, I don't think Katrina had any lines, but you know the town had you know lines when it was singing. And it just it still felt natural, you know. And God, that op- the song when he's walking in the town, and then the song where Brown Bones is singing about the headless horseman. Mm-hmm. That's all you needed, y'all. That's all you needed. That's they it. did. The, they did the thing. We need. I'm telling you, we need more animated horror comedy movies like this. Yeah. Because yeah. I love this. Because I love just Sleepy Hollow Legend in, gen- in general. Right. This right. is this is definitely one of the first ones that I watched, and of course, you know, the '99 version with Johnny Depp. Mm-hmm. And, but it wasn't too scary for me to watch as a kid, and I. Well, at least someone let you watch it because my dad sure didn't let me, even oh. though I wanted an Ichabod action figure of Johnny <laughs> Depp made by Big Farling Toys in 1999. I may have been seven, but I knew what I wanted, and it was at Toys R Us. I'll never forget that. And I couldn't <laughs> get it because my brother wanted the action figure of the crone, which is just a big zombie like woman from the same movie. So thank you. Thank you, Tim Burton. Thank you, McFarlane Toys. <laughs> I never forget that. Uh, I never forget that. Uh, I wanted to recreate every. I wanted to recreate the Disney. St- oh man! Yeah. See, now See, I'm mad. My parents me. never censored anything that me and my brothers watch. Like they never like, no, you can't watch that. You can't watch this. And so, you know, even though we watched on TV, you know, TV is censored. Yeah. So <laughs> even if I how Leo it. of you, how Leo of your life. <laughs> <laughs> A Leo of your life. Very mm. much Leo. Now I'll tell you something. Nice. Not a Leo. Oh yeah. My girl, my girl Cinderella. I'm about to say yes. Yeah, she is Cinderella. 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 Night and day is Cinderella. Um, notwithstanding the Camilla version. <laughs> you know that version is yeah. coming out currently. Does that make this a dated show? Probably, but you get what you give. Right. A dream is your a dream is a wish your heart makes. Classic. 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 So what is love? Oh my god. No, yeah. No, that song. At that mm-hmm. point, no, Disney, they came back with a vengeance. vengeance. Like, this is the golden era here. This is starting yeah. golden age right here with Cinderella. This yeah. is the beginning of the golden age right here. Yeah. Cause I mean, like, really, the villain, the villain's she, uh, stepmother, she didn't even need a song. Cause she, like, didn't. she didn't. She did just all she had to do was just stare and stroke Lucifer. That's it. Lucifer's badass. Like, right. <laughs> oh, and then, um, uh, no, the the funny. No, I think the closest thing to a villain's song was um when. And, uh, they were they doing were Sing Sweet Nightingale. That shit was yeah. hilarious. And they were so out of tude. They were so right. Sing Sweet Sing Nightingale. Nightingale. <laughs> <laughs> she was playing the flute. Right. <laughs> she right. was like, 
<laughs> but then when it goes into Cinderella singing it like just, yeah, beautifully, like hitting yeah. every single note. Yeah, but no. So this is love. Is that's a good song, and I I um I advise everybody who loves that song to listen to the French version because that is just Chef Kiss right there. Ratatouille would approve. Except his name is Remy, but the film itself Ratatouille would approve. Mm -hmm. And of course, bibbity bobbity boo. Bibbity bobbity mother. <laughs> bibbity bobbity boo. That song, that that was a song. Mm -hmm. I liked it. No, I'm kidding. No, it was a good song. Like that was, it was fun. I'm keep saying fun and fancy free whenever I say fun. <laughs> it was fun and fancy free. You know, it's Disney. It works. But yeah, the the dress ripping scene in the live yeah. adaptation, they really did make that just as sad. Mm -hmm. As the animation, because like yeah. when they're ripping her dress to shreds, mm -hmm. you're like, "Yo, just let the let the girl be. Why are y'all trying to destroy yeah. her dress? Like, leave her alone." Like that was so messy in the animated version when she was started all that just by making uh, her daughter look at the pearl Cinderella was using. It's like, but y'all didn't even want any of this stuff. Yeah. And even then, you know, the music there it had this big, you know brass sound to make right. it be like, oh, this is really serious. But then you had the strings mm -hmm. and it's silent. You know, it's like pure silence and then soft strings. And I'm just like, yeah, this is this is how you this is how you do that music in motion. You know, if you really want to get into the medium as the message then. And trivia, the when music matches the motion, it's called Mickey Mousing. Exactly. And they got that from Steamboat Willie, but we ain't talking about all that. Uh, uh, it wasn't a movie, but you know, Steamboat Willie is a classic. Mm -hmm. It is. Free my boy Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, you know. <laughs> Come on, uh, Disney. Yep. But, you know, Cinderella was the start of the Golden Age, and yep. it was a great start. It yep. is another Disney princess introduction. Because right. we got Snow White, that was the first one. Mm -hmm. And then we got. Cinderella. Uh -huh. And now to my girl. Oh, yeah. Alice. Yeah. Alice. The Alice? The Alice. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. This one, the book is out there. Yeah. But the movie definitely made it even more out there. Yeah. You ain't lying. Like, it was just, I was rewatching, I'm like, Dang, am I on right. <laughs> right. Oh, that reminds me, Avia. Happy, you have a happy unbirthday today. See, there you go. See what I did there? Got a hat, a hatter, you know. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Mad hatter, Mad hatter. Yeah, and like, you know, we're going to introduce two great characters from the book, you know, Mad Hatter, the Queen of Hearts. So, off with her head. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, and painting the roses red. And painting the roses red. That was my shit. <laughs> that was my shit. And there was a, I will say, not a lot of the songs in Alice in Wonderland were that memorable. Yeah. Even though the one that she sang with the flowers was lovely. I don't know mm -hmm. the name of it. Right. I like the Disney geek that's going to kill me for that, but I'm sorry. Yeah, just, you know, it's great, beautifully animated. The music is fantastic. Yes. The music is fantastic. The like I said, it's out there, but in a good way. Like the animation right. is spectacular. Yeah, they like you can, and like I've said before, you can just see every film we're going into now. It just the budget's going up and up and up, mm -hmm. and they're going bigger and bigger with especially the music, but you know the animation. You know everything just it's getting bigger and better. Like kudos, kudos. Mm -hmm. And then the next one. Another good but racist depiction of certain people, Peter Pan. Uh, uh, 53, of course, you can fly, you can fly, you can fly. You can everyone, fly. Everyone, yeah, you everyone know, knows. Life of the pirate, you know, with Captain Hook. Everybody, everybody know that, but, you know. um, Yeah, what made the red man red? <laughs> Yeah, well, that. I know they love them some Tiger Lily, but now come on now, y'all. Yeah, yeah. When they call them that, like y'all, that's 
No. Yeah. No. And it's also when they cut Bobby Driscoll loose, but that's not oh. here nor there. <laughs> well, they were I mean, Greatly animated, the character, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, everything was great. <laughs> it, it was beautiful gowns, beautiful so gowns. Second star, second star to the right. Oh, yeah, straight on till morning. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I, you, everybody knows those lyrics. Think of a wonderful thought, any merry little thought, you know, mm -hmm. and then you can fly, you can fly. It takes me back to that ride that Avia knows what I'm talking about. Disneyland, I'm here for it's it. It's cool. It, that's a cool ride. Scared that I was gonna lose my glasses though, it for no a, reason. It was a nice ride. It was a nice ride. But you know, we didn't need to know what made the red man red. We did not need to know. I that. mean, y'all didn't make a song with the black asshole. man black. Y'all didn't make what made the black asshole. man black. Y'all didn't make you know what make the white man white. Right. Yeah, that's no. Cause that's another no for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> like that's two for two right there. And now two for like fifty eight so far, right? Right. Because um, you know, between There's the crows more. and yeah, so There's you know more. that no it well Fantasia. So that's three. We're we're so we got two. Yeah, there's there's a lot. There there's a. We'll lot. get to them. We we gonna we gonna get to them. Lord, and was there even really even a villain in this next film? No, there really wasn't. Well, well, if you can if you consider the dog catcher, but you don't really see him. But and pound, speaking of which, you know, that's there's another racist. Mm, mm. Avia, what's the film? <laughs> Lady in the Tramp. That's the next. One. Lady in the Tramp. And the music was it's beautiful because how every yeah, Disney movie, right, how every Disney movie starts is always some kind of orchestral choir version of mm -hmm. the big song. The meatball spaghetti scene will forever be classic. They classic. emulate through this day. Like in everyone, their mom wants to redo that scene every single time. It's beautiful. You know, like he's a tramp classic song. It's fun. It's fancy free. It's, you know, <laughs> jazzy. And it's like you had Peggy Lee. Peggy Lee sing it. Come on yep. now. But, you know, there's that uh, We Are Siamese, if you please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just got come on now, Disney. We just asked you to stop with the what make the red man red. Now you're gonna jump over to the Siamese. We will make it drown. Like you're talking about drowning a child. You're talking about drowning and killing a child. Come on. <laughs> Wait, you know, I guess you could say, so this isn't love. No. <laughs> you know. I guess you could say that this was definitely not Once Upon a Dream. No. <laughs> I love the movie, but that yeah. me, that song was racist as hell. Again, yeah. yeah. racist as hell. We're going to be saying a lot. A lot. We're going to be saying that a lot, especially in the Walt era. And if you don't, if you have to go back and listen, please do and be like, oh. Oh. And this, I'll give it to this. They're trying to re- they they are trying to fix it, right? But, but it kind of looks like a razor. But they are trying to fix it because in the live adaptation of Lady in the Tramp, the cats don't right. sing that song. They sing a completely different song. Right. I would like to say um, we missed the movie. I would just like to say. Oh I'm yeah. Throw this in here. Yeah. Shall I? Shall I? Let's do it. Let, I know what you talk so, uh, about. Let, let, let's, let's talk <laughs> about let because we we skipped over one that is near and dear to a lot of racists' heart. Song of the South. Dad, damn. And then we'll continue to our regularly scheduled program of you know the next film after Lady and the Tramp. But uh, you know that zippity doo da zippity yay. Negroes are inferior in every way. Uh uh. They even had a mountain base. Off this movie, oh, yeah. Um, uh, Flash Mountain, but yeah, they Flash changed the uh, Princess and the Frog. They changed the theme of Princess right. and the Frog. Be what a, two years yeah. ago? Yeah, two years. Yeah, but it's like you know having Brer Rabbit, Brer Fox, Brer Bear, and Uncle Remus like <sighs> lay side. And the crazy thing is, Walt Disney really did campaign for this movie. Yeah, because he loved the books, and mm -hmm. you know. And honestly, I hate to just say it like this, but the movie was boring. 
It was boring. I'm sorry, y'all. All it had was Zippity Doo and you know they colonized their own song. So yeah, that's why we forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, though. <gasps> um, Sleepy Beauty. That's the next yes. one. Yes. And Once upon a dream. Just, mm, <sighs> like <gasps> no, no. Can we just talk about the scene? That whole scene. Where like and then when you know they're singing back and forth and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. you have the the choir come in and you have the silhouettes with the water and like the reflection just and well, was, he was in his bag he was in his bag with this because they created a very memorable villain with yes. Maleficent yes. no ability. No, remember when she was like, and now you shall face me, oh prince, and all the powers of hell. Like, <laughs> it ain't that deep. deep. But, but I don't know if it's Disney, though. A lot of the princes at this time didn't really get a lot of face time. Right. But Philip did. He right. actually did get quite a bit of face time during the golf. did something. Right. He actually was the prince that did something. I'm like, okay, Philip, I like you. Mm-hmm. I like you. Right. <laughs> Like he didn't listen to his father. He didn't care what, even though it was kind of creepy how he snuck up on old girl, but still, you know, they had a good song from it. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, no, that, that, and just, just to take the more music nerd moment, just to take the, let me make sure it was Tchaikovsky and I'm not tripping. Yeah, see, I know those words, y'all. <laughs> I, I think it was Tchaikovsky who did, yes, the Sleeping Beauty Waltz, you know, um, Piotr mm-hmm. Tchaikovsky. Um, you know, just to take that, to take his music, to take classical music that, you know, once again, that's going back to Fantasia, to take classical mm-hmm. music, put lyrics to it, mm-hmm. you know, and do something new and adapt and all that stuff. Like that's, that's transcending, you know, what you've already had and like, you know, like I keep saying, that's when, you know, you just see the progression in what this company is doing, especially in their music department. Like, just bravo, bravo. And one thing that Sleeping Beauty did that you'll see in the Disney Renaissance is when, again, at the end, they always do, just like they did at the beginning, at the end, they always do the main song with the choir and the prince and the princess dancing on, on the dance floor, zooming out. And that's the first, and that's normally how they, especially how Beauty and the Beast ends. Mm-hmm. And, and so they modeled the end of Sleeping Beauty. Right. With Beauty and the Beast. We'll go, you know, we'll talk about right. that when we talk about the Disney Renaissance. But I just thought that was cool how, you know, how Golden Age, how the Golden mm-hmm. Age, classic and Golden Age, really were the blueprint. Right. Uh, come to know Disney as, as far as their yeah. animation and their music and animation. Yeah, I I totally agree. And the fact that that was right at the end of the fifties, you know that that was a nice little send off to the, you know that like we're still in the golden age because these are the Walt ages, but mm-hmm. you know this was a nice little send off to you know the princess films for a while because mm-hmm. after that you know. Um, huh, because to me, I'm just going to say it, the classic era, you know, the Walt era ends in 1967 with Jungle Book. But before we get to that, you know, there are like three more films before that. And it's, this is where the music got really good, in my opinion. Like, the music was good before, but, you know, this is where we got those catchy, you know, bops. This is where the bops really started. You know, you can whistle while you twerk. <laughs> waltz when so this is love came on. You mm-hmm. can act like a, a music geek with Once Upon a Dream, but this next one, which actually came out on my birthday, you know, <laughs> came out on my birthday. Take it away, Miss Knighton. One hundred and one Dalmatians. Let's go. Okay, the right. only song they had in there, like was the best. Cruella the. <laughs> they took the villain. The villain finally had their own yep. song. So and she if she doesn't it. scare you, if she doesn't scare you, no evil thing no will. Evil will. You know, like she she didn't even sing the song. Roger sang the song, but you right. Roger oh, did. <laughs> I need the dog. 
no, it was when she, it was when she, when she knocked on the door. It was when she knocked on the door, and then, uh, Anita was like, "Let her in, Nanny." And she just, <laughs> Anita, darling. Anita, darling. <laughs> and Emma Stone killed it every time she yes, said it. She did. She did the Anita, darling, perfectly, <laughs> perfectly. And this, Ooh. this movie, like, like I said, there's only one song. But it it's it's amazing because cool, we're talking about the villain. We're not even talking about Anita and Roger's love. We're not talking about Purdy or Pongo's love. We're talking about the villain <laughs> here. And this actually establishes how the villain gets their own song. And I I love this movie so much. Cruella's evil, but now that Cruella came out, I understand her more. <laughs> <sighs> but I, I love I, lo- I love this movie. Yeah. It is just like, you know, the music. Okay, you know, I, I think that's when it, it dipped into like that early 60s style of uh orchestra. Mm-hmm. But you know, it, it worked here because you you know, I love the scene and the music there where Pongo's looking at all the dogs and they look like their owners. And the next one would be, sir. The sword in the stone. <sighs> what a like, Babe. I still don't know what Merlin was talking about with that flippity floppity whatever. <laughs> but homeboy did he 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 said what he said, you know, mumble rap yep. right there. Yep. Mad Madam <laughs> Mill. Like Madam Mill. Madam you know, the music Mim. though, the music when Arthur was pulling out the sword, like that was that was really mm-hmm. great. Oh, and then that's what makes the world go round when they were fish. Yep. Loved it. Like I love the Sword of Stone. I love the anything with the Arthurian legend in it. I will watch it. Period. I will watch it. I'm like, here and for even it. the songs, like they get this is like these are where the earworms. Like I said, you know, th- I think this was the period where them ear- earworms started because I can just because I said, you know, that's what makes the world go. I can literally hear Arthur say, "For every high there is a low. Ooh, for every yeah. two there is a fro." And that's oh, what makes yeah. the world go. <laughs> <laughs> yep, classic, classic. Yeah. And then Madam Milm is another villain song. Yes, Mad Madam Milm. <laughs> that lady was out her mind. My rabbit ass mind. Like she was. Yeah. Well the uh the music when they were doing the wizard do off, that was that was so fun. It, it, it was, was so fun. Lady really thought she was gonna turn to a rhino and win. <laughs> and then turn to a it dragon. <laughs> Against Merlin, right? You sleep. Yeah, loved it. Loved it. Lo- like that. Yeah, that was that was a fun movie. You know, a fun and fancy free movie. You know, coming out of there, and it's like you know, you could. I think though, this was when Walt was. This is also the time where Walt kept trying to push because at this time he was like, we need to adapt Beauty and the Beast. We need to adapt Chanticleer. We need to adapt The Little Mermaid. We need to adapt uh, The Ice Queen. Uh, we need to adapt like all of Hans Christian Andersen's stories and the rest of the Brothers Grimm. He wanted to do Aladdin, but you know he couldn't because these other two films took up so much of his time. And I think this one, you know, this is this is a classic. It's a when I, another great, like when I tell you, me and my brothers will watch this next one. We had the VHS, like we had the pretty much yep. VHS, pretty much all the classic, same classic, same. the Jungle Book, one of my favorite. Oh, you forgot, you forgot one. Oh, well, which one I forget? Oh, flip it and reverse it. Oh, Mary Poppins? Mary Poppins. Oh, are we? Oh. Okay. I mean, it is partly animated, so I didn't know if we were going to count that or not. Yeah. Just talk about it briefly. It, it, they stepped in time. There were some penguins. You know, she flew on the umbrella, and there was some good music. They, they all flew a kite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, okay, we're going to count Mary Poppins. We're going to count Mary Poppins because there is a partial... Animated. animated. It was. Animated it was. It was at the time when Walt was, you know, getting all consumed. He, he got consumed with this. You know, they like I said, they all flew a kite. It was a good song, and they ended with this next one. Right. Oh Classic. yeah, that was it. Yeah. Classic. 
Classic but the one that Amy had just named up with the Jungle Book. Let's talk about that. Oh, Ooby Doo. Yeah, I want to be like you. Ooh, we do. I like, like you. Shibby doo. The bare necessities. <laughs> oh, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife. Yeah, man. It would be awesome. It would have been awesome if the vultures. Well, yeah. I did the Beatles, and they actually had a song for the soundtrack. Yeah, I think they tried to. I think Walt tried to get them, and John Lennon was just like, "No, no." Do you know how big that right. was? Like, big? It was, it was going to be the Beatles had. So Disney trivia, y'all, from this nerd right here. But the Beatles were supposed to be the Vultures, and they were going to do an original song. I think they were supposed to do the theme song of it, and then Sheer Khan was supposed to have a song. Uh, called the the Waltz of the Hunters or something because there was another human character other than the girl at the end who was supposed to kind of guide Mowgli, you know, in becoming you know a man that you saw in like the sequels. But we'll get into those. Mm -hmm. And it's just like I think it worked best that Shere Khan didn't have a song because we got Kaz trusting me. Yeah, you know, and that song was like eerie. But it was hilarious because, like, all he had to do was look in your eyes. And the and it. <laughs> right. I think that's actually what led to my distaste for snakes. Mm. Call? Because Call was one that. See, the thing about the Disney classic looking snakes is that they didn't look scary. They don't no, look No, they didn't. Scary. No, <laughs> no. I just think, like, because remember, well, for those watching at home, you know, in the comfort of their own home. Unless you're watching Australia and then you know my struggle. But it's like watching that and then when my brother loved him some anaconda with ice cube, I just mm -mm. I'm good. Wasn't J-Lo in that movie? Yes, she was. <laughs> Jenny from the block. <laughs> that was before she made Jenny from the block. <laughs> I know. Well, she had to go to the block after, killing, after being a part of that Hell of a ride with the anaconda, uh, but no, that was that was really good. Like the music was just amazing, and you know, I think every animator, everyone who's into Disney will agree. Uh, the song that you know that Mowgli gets enticed by this girl, you know, that was just that was mm -hmm. beautiful. You know, it really was beautiful because it was like out of nowhere in this big jungle adventure. But at the very end, when they do the reprise for Bare Necessities, and it's just Baloo and Bagheera, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful send off to Walt. Mm -hmm. Because at the time of making this film, he died. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they dance into the sunset. And it just, you know, and the music, like, I just, I wish, I wish that some, I'm sure they did, but I wish I could see those dailies, you know, where they film the actors, you know, doing stuff that they could base it off of, you know, in their animation, because apparently they laugh, everybody in the studio, including Walt and his brother, laugh their asses off when um, the actor who played Blue started doing his, you know, little scat session in I Want to Be Like You. Like, everybody, like, apparently everybody was laughing their heads off. You know, because he did the poses, he did it. Like I wish I could see that, because that's just you know, there's just a lot of fun and fancy free in mm -hmm. you know the studio, and it's like the music it just is so good. But you know what's funny, and we're gonna get into it in the next episode, is that because of this movie, that's where everyone started copying their own animation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. There are pictures showing the, the <laughs> there's evidence showing that yeah. they copied the animation. There's evidence showing it. Big evidence. So, you know, I, for once I can say I'm Disneyed out though. You know, we, we, mm -hmm. we took a little trip down memory lane through the magical mm -hmm. kingdom of, of classic racist Disney. Yes. You know? In the next episode, we are going to go into the animal face slash the dark face yeah, that a lot of people face. are into about. But to be honest, there weren't really a lot of bad movies in this face. No. There it weren't. Was just, it was just about not that much. Just 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 a little. It was like it was like when you season your food and you just put a little extra 
something that don't need to be in there. That's all. I like the Aristocats, Robin Hood, Winnie the Pooh, Oodle Wally, all the rescuers. Mm, yeah. The Fox and the Hound, the Black <gasps> Cauldron, and the Great Mouse Detective. Like, yep. come on. Yep. Come on. <laughs> Classic. 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 Whew, yeah, I'm we'll ready. Be those next episode. But thank you everyone for tuning in to the A and A show. We will see y'all next time. Or not? I don't know. No, I'm kidding. You better come who back. Knows? Who, who knows? You better come back. <laughs> right. Peace. Peace.